Tim? <clears throat> Tim, son! Tim! Elizabeth, I'm phoning to see... I know why you're phoning. The boy. Is the boy... He's here and he's safe. Home. Now just get out of our lives and stay out. Do you hear me? Just keep out. Hello. I'm hungry. Do you have a good sleep? Yes, thanks. What's the time? Is it break? Yes, it's break. How do you feel? All right. He didn't want me to do it. Drink the whiskey. Honestly, he didn't. I did it myself. We went to this big hotel at the seaside. Western Supermare. That's where he phoned you from, Mum. Then we went in the car out into the country somewhere. To a cottage or a house. Then we had arguments and it happened. I don't remember much after that. I remember phoning and being sick in the car on the way home with Mark. That's it, really. Mum? Hmm? about the shop breaking in. Richard Davison came to see me, if that's any help. I'll pay for any damage. You know, save up pocket money. How did you get up to Birmingham and find Eric's house? I didn't. He was here in the close. He's lost his business. He's not the boss anymore. He got the sack. That's what he was maybe coming to tell Mum. I want to go back to school after lunch, if that's all right. Are you sure you feel up to it? I'll get changed. He was drunk, my dad. But he still loves Mum, he says. I think he's got it into his mind. Mark's sort of stolen us. Do you feel stolen? Just the drink talking. Do you feel stolen? <laughs> like a battered old car. Can't you take the rest of the morning off? I'm probably not as bad as I look. You've got a quarter of an hour. Take a cat nap. Close my eyes. I'll never get them open again. Thanks for the coffee. Where have you been? 
Nowhere. Is it? No. Skyver. Stupid coming back this afternoon. Edward is giving us a verb test. What's the matter? Nothing. Deco? What the hell are you doing here? I get nowhere on the phone, sir. So I am. You want apologies? All right. He got drunk. I didn't realize. Sorry. Okay. Where is he now? He's in school. There you are, then. Can't be too bad. No harm done. Leave him alone. Leave me you, you mean? There's no point. Listen, in... he tells me he thieved over 80 quid from that shop of yours. Have you seen the state that I found him in that morning? Seen him round mirrors, have you? Can't take his eyes off himself. Clothes, he's demanding clothes. You name it, attention he wants. This religious thing he's got. It's nothing to do with you. What are you talking about? I'm his father. I don't like it. You don't have to. You like it? It's Tim's life, for God's sake. You're talking about an individual, a boy growing up. You know about that, dear? I think so, yes. I think you could say I know something about that, yes. Keeping tabs on an handful of soft young snobs, you know nothing! The real world, nothing! If you're trying to provoke me, I've got a class of ten-year-olds who put you in the shade. Yeah, you live with kids, you're happy with kids, you're more of a kid than a man. Look at you, 20 years younger. That's why he married you. He likes kids! Leave us alone! You've no idea what you've done, have you? You never have any bother with teenagers getting tanked up in the quiet in this school of yours. Be the first in the country if you don't. You don't force it down their throats. Is that what the boy says? That's what it comes down to. Now, listen, sunshine. There's worse things than having a skin for once in your life. He's never gone hungry like I went hungry You've at his age. You've never gone hungry. That's all you know. It's all fantasy. You know nothing. I know you. If you can't find a fight, you come looking for one. What time school finished? You're not seeing him. How do you stop me? You lost Palmer Hydraulics. That's what this is all about. She tell you the messages she leaves on my machine at home? When can we meet? She tell you that. When can we meet? I want to see you. Oh, don't phone here. Don't tell Mark. She tell you any of that. If you resent me... I resent you like hell! I've fought your soul all my life! That the nice, educated old man thieved a fern from under my nose. I'm not having our son soft like that. Do you want him a selfish, immature bastard like his father? I'll see the boy. He's too young to have to deal with anything like this. He's 13, for God's sake. Leave him alone! There's things he needs to know. I'll see the boy now. Oh, no, you won't. Get out of my way. You want to justify yourself to a boy too young to criticize you, but old enough to tell you what you want to hear. I know teachers like you. Piss out. And any blame for what may or may not have happened to you this week, this year, every day of your life, it's nothing to do with you, Eric Palmer, no. It gets shared around. I get my ration, Elizabeth gets hers. An old man thieved your firm. I've stolen your family. Don't hold us responsible. We're not. Think of Tim. Tim tells us that you're still in love with Elizabeth, that you love him too. Prove it. Leave them alone. The boy's been through a three-day nightmare. Three-day nightmare? Is that what he says? I could have sworn he was having the time of his life. There's no point, Elizabeth. Bit of excitement for a change, something grown up fun. He told me, and listen to this, he told me he was having the greatest time of his life. And he was sober, smiling, and he meant it. Let's think about Tim, you said. Let's do that. I say this, a growing boy, teenager, highly strung, half bloody hysterical at times. What that boy needs is a father. His real father. Not some child mind there. 
His own flesh and blood. Not some stand-in you got to share with another 30. I thought you'd at least be some sort of safe security for him. You're not even that. He come away with me easy. No trouble. A few weeks ago, I could have had her too. It's only talk. He's lost. It's only talk, Mark. Hmm? You get your feet. Help him, will you, please? Take this gentleman to my house. I'll join you at once. No point in saying there's nothing else to say. Going. It's my afternoon for junior chest. Are you hurt, Mark? I'm perfectly all right, thank you. You know what's happened? The chess club meets in five minutes, and I would like to be there early. Was that manly enough for you? Are you quite all right? Yes, thank you. I don't think he is. Leave me alone. Caused all that, Mark. I have no idea. That's no help to me. You realize this is serious? Yes. The other man, he was my first husband. Is he hurt? For your sake, I hope not. I'm going to see what I can do to persuade him to be generous. Half your school saw you brawling. I know. Mark. I know. I'll get in touch when I've got some news. Would it help if you came with me? I should stay with Mark. Nothing foolish, please, Mark. He's made me like him.
do you need me anymore? No, thank you, Richard. Thank you very much. He asked for a drink. Yeah. Goodbye, sir. I hope you're feeling better. Who are you? Neil Carolyn, presenter of the cathedral. Eric Palmer. Mrs. Fellow sketched the background, yes. Tim's father, then. We're very fond of Tim at the cathedral. We met, you and I, though met may be too strong a word for it, at his valediction service. This precinct is close where you live. Yes. Under your jurisdiction? The Dean and Chapter's property, yes. What are you going to do about this? I'm hoping very much, Mr. Palmer, that you're as anxious as the Dean and Chapter would be to treat this unfortunate matter as regrettable, but unimportant and indeed out of character. I bet you are. With Timothy, a member of the school, and Mark, a housemaster, it would be unsettling if you felt compelled to... Of course, you're most welcome to rest here. You know the Wheatfield Hotel? I'll be staying there overnight. I do hope this afternoon won't lead to further unpleasantness, Mr. Palmer. As a governor of the school, I can promise you, Mr. Fellows will be well reprimanded. So, I've been assaulted on your property by somebody virtually in your employ. Should I phone your taxi? If I get stopped by the police, I refer him back to you. The dean in chapter seems to get a finger in every pie. Have you been in an accident, Mr. Palmer? Got a room for me. But yes, of course. Look, um, why did you sit down for a bit? I'll go to the room. Usual room? Number 27. Shall I get your luggage? I'm all right. If you want to help. Yes, of course. Give me a bottle of whiskey, a doctor, can you do that? Make an appointment if necessary, I can go to him. And get me the phone number of a good, young, local solicitor. What did he say? Oh, he was reasonable enough. I just felt so, oh, just embarrassed and sad. What reasonable enough words did Neil Carolyn deliver? He said it was serious. He said that half the school had enjoyed the spectacle. Well, that's not true. There weren't that many around. He said Mark had been foolish. Oh, I'm not worried. Mark's worked for nearly 30 years in the school. Tim's served his time in the choir. That should count for something, shouldn't it? All right. Listen, my dear. Through my late husband, I know quite a lot about how the Dean and Chapter operates, and it's not always pretty. The astonishing clank as they close ranks against potential attack can be very alarming. It's odd, isn't it? One of the glories of the British Cathedral is that it seems to find room within its walls for artists and philosophers, mystics, screwballs. Yet the first whiff of scandal and the authorities are scuttling for safety from nasty headlines and looking around for a scapegoat. Be warned.
was it? Solicitors Clark from Mitchell, Lambert and Gill. <laughs> Who says the law can't move fast when it wants? I'm informed that their client, Mr. Eric Palmer, intends to summon me for common assault. Oh. We'd advised, I'm advised, to contact my own solicitor. What are you going to do? I don't know. Well, it's just meant to frighten you, that's all. Well, it's worked. I'm sorry. Good evening. This is Neil Carroll. May I speak to the headmaster, please? Thank you. somewhere in this place? Well, I don't know. Oh, I hate this. Well, nobody will be here till they come to stoke up the boilers. Oh, thank you, Richard. This cancels all debts between us. Tim! Tim! No, no, someone here. Well, I can't shout quietly, for God's sake. Tim! Shh! Mark, I'm sorry to keep you. Where do you elsewhere at 7.30? That's quite all right, Headmaster. What's all this about? I've had the presenter on the line, the Dean's phone from Cumbria. What have you heard, sir? That you fought with some man in the close, watched by a number of tourists and members of the school. Is this true? I suppose so. This isn't the least like you, a man of your age and position. I agree. Sit down, Mark. According to the presentor, the man's injuries were substantial enough for him to obtain a doctor's report and seek legal advice. This man, your wife's first husband, Timothy's father. Yes. Messy. The sort of thing we rather endeavour to avoid. The Dean and Precentor are extremely upset and see very little hope of keeping things under wraps. Yes, I'm sorry. All right, Mark. The entire story, please. <laughs> the entire story? I haven't time to indulge cleverness. A summary. Yes. Yes, I know, Emma. We'll have to be late. Yeah, ring the Cliftons and apologise, will you? I don't know, 20 minutes, half an hour. Yes, I know. Can't be helped. Yes? A summary. My stepson Timothy ran three mornings ago in distress to where a chance meeting with his father led to the child's abduction to places then unknown. But whence at four o'clock this morning I returned him home. His father, meanwhile, missing him and receiving scant telephonic cooperation from my wife, appeared unwished for in my house, abusing and insulting both her and myself. I had a sudden impulse to hurt him, severely, if possible. You find this amusing? I find it grotesque and unreal, but I'm also lightheaded from lack of sleep, and perhaps you confuse that with amusement. How long have you worked here? 30 years. About 30. Long enough to know that public figures must keep private problems private. Yes, sir. How many of the boys saw you fighting for I don't know. I didn't take a roll call. Is this man likely to bring a prosecution? Yes, it's likely. 
The dean says that the school and cathedral must have plans ready, should it come to that. He's called for a meeting of the governing body. The dean and chapter are concerned about attendant publicity. Naturally. It'll take a week to organize a quorum. Until then, I'm afraid I have to suspend you from all house and teaching duties. You'll continue to live at the flat, of course. I'll have Martin Byford take over your house duties. I know he's helped you out in the past, if he's acceptable. Very acceptable. He's young, ambitious, and if I suddenly had to leave, he'd know the ropes. That much better. Oh, hasn't he also a wife who's a trained SRN? Highly acceptable. I'll ignore that. You're upset. It really takes a governor's meeting. So if it comes to court and I lose, I can no longer stay on at the school. Well, if it comes to court at all, I imagine you'll expect me to do the decent thing and resign. As I'm sure you would say to your boys, you should have thought of that before. As they might reply, it doesn't work like that, sir. You're not helping yourself, Mark. Tonight, just for once, I don't care. Have you been drinking? No. It's a pastime that seems to have a lot to answer for. We'll talk again tomorrow. If we can hush it up, we will. If we can't, well, I understand. You've been a tower of strength in the school, Mark. In the two years I've been headmaster, you've been invaluable. And even it's rumoured before. Have a good evening, sir. I'm sorry, Mark. I'm sorry, too. Come. Ah, oh, Martin, come in, please. Thank you. We'll talk again tomorrow morning. Come round when you're ready, Martin. Thanks, Mark. I'm sorry. Everybody's sorry. Now, Martin. Hello. Well? I've been gawked or giggled at every step through the cloth. The talk of the town. I've just had ten minutes with the head. I've decided to resign the house. Did he ask you to do that? If Eric takes me to court, and you know if he can, he will, my position here is impossible, regardless of the outcome. Private schools are like that. Even if he dropped the charges, it's probable I'd be asked to go. That's unfair dismissal. Don't do it. Fight! I've fought enough for one day. But the head... The dean and chapter's calling for a governor's meeting, and poor old Mark, scrap in the close, will be seen as a big joke or something vaguely nasty. In either case, I'll lose this house. Would you want... A mad old man like me looking after your child. You can't leave the house after all these years. It's my fault. Oh. oh. My fault entirely. Eric had lost the initiative and like a fool, I handed it back to him. Sit down. You're worn out. Was it true what Eric said that oh, he could... Not now, Mark. Why not? Everything else is falling round our ears. It wasn't true. I walked out the moment I thought it was dangerous. The messages? <laughs> Once I'd lied to you, I wanted to keep it a secret. That was the reason for having to see or speak to Eric, nothing else. We endlessly have to cope with Eric. He's Tim's father. Well, then let him start behaving that way. All right, all I'm saying is he's going to be there whether we like it or not. He's part of our future. We have to accept that. Yes, I know. I love you. Tim loves you. What are you afraid of? The way it's suddenly going to disappear? Or find a better life. <laughs> You're very tired. Mm. We all are. Sleep on it. Promise me you won't think about resigning tonight. I hate to think of you without your boys. Not mine. That's the great trap, thinking that they're yours. They're families of their own. And so have I. Don't worry. As a confirmed old bachelor, I've survived the major shock of falling in love and marrying a beautiful young woman with a splendid son. 
Any further change will be nothing in comparison. I love you. I love you. Keith the Cursed is robing you. Oh, you. You just come with me. No, um, you wait while I... You just wait. Your parents will be worrying, Tim. I want to confess something. Not anything I've done bad, but it's a secret you mustn't tell. Very well. First of all, the cathedral. It's not like you say. It's not friendly or familiar. Just a building that goes off duty when the people leave. This is my part now. Get out. That's the way it does it. It's sort of bigger in the dark. There's noises. But I wasn't scared. I wish I had been. That would have been something. But there wasn't anything at all. Just... This is my part now. Get out. Let me telephone for Mark to come and fetch you. Love gets everybody scared. People are scared to show their love to each other, in case nobody wants their love. Yet everything's about love. Hymns and pop songs and sermons and everything. I think we invent God and say that God is love. Then we can do things and show love for other people, pretending it's for God and we don't feel ashamed or scared. Tim, you're worn out. This is the worst bit about me. Promise you won't tell anyone. Swear it, you've got to. I swear. There's something wrong with me. Everybody needs me. People take bits of me. I don't know how to stop them. Do you understand this? Sometimes, quite often really, I dream I'm Jesus. And people push around me, grubbing at me, and wanting all the time. I don't know how to send them away. It's a special gift to feel needed. No, you're doing it too. I'm not special. I'll go home now. I'll go on my own. Whatever you want. Running away is no good. Tim, God bless you. Hello. Hello, sir. 
They're upstairs. Don't touch me. Just... Yeah. Come in. So, how's he like feeling the skids under? What's he ever done to you except be kind to me and your son? He sent you wrong. He doesn't know I'm here. Sit down. Well, who's next? You worried and confused Tim. As you say, you put the skids under Mark's way of life. Who's next for the treatment? Why have you come here? Well, that school you think is so soft is probably going to take his job away from him, whether you put him in court or not. He was writing his letter of resignation as I left. How's the boy? You all right? All right. Yes and no. He saw you and Mark fighting. Don't blame me. These last three months, ever since Tim's birthday, I've been forced to relive bits and pieces of our marriage, the good bits and the bad. Well, in a way, I'm grateful. In dull routine moments, I'd found myself remembering our past life together with the odd flicker of a thrill. But if these three months have taught me nothing else, they brought home to me the sheer bloody relief of getting free of you. Watch your mouth. Oh, feel free to hit me. Just make sure I'm marked enough for a doctor and solicitor. I said, watch your mouth, girl. You're trying it on. You'd have it all come out in court, would you? Your son in the witness box forced into a blow-by-blow -blow account of how you got him pissed, not even you. Don't bank on it. There's nothing of you left attractive. I find that sad. With no status behind you, no power, you're, you're just a bore. You're a middle-aged bore with a drink problem. There's one slumped on the corner of every bar. We were the best. That was then. I'll always love you, girl. But I love Mark. The more pressure you put us under, the closer you make us. Ah, I never thought I'd see you settling for life in the slow lane, not you. You can't bear it, can you? Getting older, being overlooked. Let me have something of my son. You are tearing him apart. Seeing you and Mark fighting yesterday destroyed the one thing he'd always depended on, Mark's cool judgment, the way he never loses his temper, always ha has a kind and generous answer to any problem. He'll get over it. Does he bear me any grudge? What do you think? Well, I've done him a favor then. I'll push some steel into his spine, giving him something he can kick against. What's he said? He pities you. You bitch. That's what he said last night. He pities you. He says you've got nothing. 
that you're jealous of what he and Mark and I have. I'm losing you both. We were never yours to lose. The boy needs a father. The boy's got a father. I'm his father. Whatever happens, that doesn't change. I'm his father. Me. There's nothing you or anyone else can do about that. I oh, know. Don't use him, Eric. Don't use us. I was a child when we met and married. I thought I liked being used. Now I've grown up. Don't go. Talk to me. Please. Can you get us some coffee? Will he want to see me? Well, that's up to him, isn't it? A coffee for two. How's it going? You missing some of your lessons? Doesn't matter. I was just going to say goodbye, yeah. I saw me around for a while. Chasing a big new job. London way. Looks good. They're keen to have me. Did you try to find me? Yes, I, d I did. Really, I did. Believe me. White Chandra. Anyway, like I say, if I got to London... I know. Yeah, see, it'd be a busy time. Very busy. <laughs> About yesterday, your old dad making a fool of himself all over again. Huh? You know what I'm like when I've been drinking. Huh? I, I need your understanding, son. I don't know what you're talking about. Yesterday afternoon. No? Okay then. Jackal. Right. Buy some. When will I see you again? Christmas maybe, or your, your birthday if you want. Uh, how old you be? What? Fourteen. In, in no time you'll be eighteen. Do what you want then. I don't want your money. Look after your mother. Job. Just because your dad's a yokel with a shitty Land Rover. Right. Are you coming to games, father? Yes, he is. Yes, I am. Where did you go with your father? Western. I can't help Brilliant. It. What did your dad do? He's got a big factory in London. He's great. 